Charlie, you messed me up there. <laughs> well, first of all, and most importantly, welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. But yes, in case you, it seems like it's been put out way too many places, I do turn 50 tomorrow. So thank you for... So it's always great because at this time of year, it's Pentecost Sunday, so it's like we celebrate the birthday of the church and we celebrate my birthday, so it's, it's just, it's awesome. So, Ben, what? Yeah, you're, I guess, I, Ben, you're, you're basically my boss in this church, so I think I have to let you come forward. <laughs> Well, I know how much Pastor just loves surprises, but uh, happy birthday tomorrow on your, on your milestone of 50 years. And then uh, on behalf of the SPRC and the congregation, we'd like to give you this gift. Am I supposed to open it? You can if you want. Go for it. Okay. Just a second. <laughs> oh, cool. I got one of... This one, it, it fell, my one that was in my garden at home fell over and broke in one of the windstorms and was shattered all over the place. So this is awesome because I'm too cheap to buy one. So thank you very much. This is awesome. So thank you very much because I really, really wanted to get one. Thank you. And balloons as well. That is cool. So thank you for the well wishes and it's just, it's amazing to think that I've been here for half a century. And my mom is here in the congregation today, and she said earlier this week, it's like, how in the world did you get so old when I haven't aged? <laughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. So thank you, Mom, for at least ushering me into this world. So <laughs> we will welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, and welcome to everybody that's joining us at home as well. We've got a good number of announcements, so we will go ahead and start off. First of all, I do have to just give this word of warning. Before the service started, we had a bat flying around. So we hope that it is off somewhere doing its bat thing. Um, it evidently wanted to wish me a happy birthday as well. And the Holy Spirit came in like a bat and not a dove um, on this Pentecost Sunday. But just be aware, um, we, we hope it's gone now, but we, it disappeared. So <laughs> we'll hope we can get through the service um, without its appearance again. Change the World funds for May will go to the Bureau County Food Pantry. This is the last Sunday for Children's Sunday School until the fall, so all the kids are welcome to go with the teachers for um, Sunday School after the children's message. The last regular senior high youth group is tonight starting at 4.30 p.m. We will have food and games, so please come. Meetings this week, tomorrow we've got finance at 7 o'clock. On Wednesday, we've got the last choir recording for the summer. And on Thursday, we've got the last junior high youth and kids at 1.30 at the church. Um, today, like I said, is Pentecost. And some of you have been asking me about Pentecost already today. I'll tell you more about it in the sermon. But it is officially the birthday of the church. So thank you to everybody who wore red today. It's wonderful to see all the different shades of red out there. Um, and thank you to everybody who, who brought in um, red flowers today. It's so neat to be able to have such a predominant color in worship today. Please remember that after the service, you're welcome to take your flower back home. And I do have to say thank you, Mommy, for providing the, the flowers up here that I'll take home as well. Next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday. We've got five wonderful young people joining our church through the rite of confirmation. We've got a, over half of them here today as well. And we would appreciate it if you would attend either in worship or online as they take this next step in the Christian journey. Let us know who in your family is graduating. We are wanting to put that in the June newsletter that's coming out. And then later um, in June, we will be celebrating Graduate Recognition Day. And if you'd like to be on the schedule for special music for the 8 o'clock service during the summer, please contact Karen Newby. This can be vocal or instrumental music. And then, basically, to finish up all of the announcements, I want to make sure that those of you who didn't hear the updated guidelines for our church regarding the, the CDC, everything that came out, we did send it out on via email on Friday, so hopefully you were able to see that. But if not, I want to just do a very quick run-through of what we're looking at. 
for the worship service. We will continue to encourage the use of masks for everyone through these last two Sundays in May. This aligns with the school year so that our kids and youth who haven't been vaccinated completely yet will still be kept as safe as possible when they're in group or crowded situations. Um, then the first Sunday in June, June 6th, all fully vaccinated people and fully vaccinated are the ones that have had all of the, the shots and our two weeks afterwards will not have to wear masks when they're in the church building. I know it's a wonderful thing that we've gotten to this point. But we do ask for those who are not vaccinated or don't feel comfortable yet that they keep their masks on in service. We are, there is no judgment or anything like that if you have your, your mask on in the church building. So it's whatever you feel comfortable doing. We will be operating on the honor system and we expect that you'll, you'll be honest in terms of what, what, you're, what you've been able to accomplish with the vaccines. Um, Jesus said that we are to love one another. John Wesley then urged us to do no harm, so we continue to try and do our best to keep each other safe. Then starting June 6th, because of what the CDC and what the Bureau County Health Department has told us, we will be able to sing songs again. Um, those who are wearing masks will w sing behind the mask. Those who are fully vaccinated will sing without masks. Um, so the songs will be shortened a bit to be able to have less of the particulates in the air, but we are going to be able to sing again starting June 6th. Small groups such as Bible studies, committee meetings, starting right away if fully vaccinated and we try and kind of keep our, our social distance if possible, the participants can meet for those meetings without masks. But again, anyone who feels more comfortable having their mask on is encouraged to do so. We will, for the summer, be opening up the rest of the pews and so we hope that during usually in the summer we have less attendance um, you can be as socially distanced as possible sit with your families sit with your your close friends that you've been doing things with um, sit with the people that you came here to the church with but we just it's an extra piece of caution that we urge people to do and we will continue to do the live stream and the recorded worship at 8 o'clock so that those who want to continue worshiping from home certainly can at any time that they want to. We will have more information coming out about various different details, but we're very happy that we've reached that point and let's, let's keep going. So thank you. And now let us bow our heads for our focusing prayer on this Pentecost Sunday. On Pentecost Day so long ago, your great spirit, O God, came upon the apostles in Jerusalem. May your spirit come upon us and this community of faith here this day as well. We welcome the flame and the light of your spirit. Renew us, Lord, with a renewed and energized faith and affirm us as your people here to worship and let us celebrate with strength, courage, and hope in Christ. Amen. And now if you are able, if you'll please stand and join JD in our responsive call to worship. On this Pentecost Sunday, we are here to give God spirited praise and enthusiastic thanks. As we continue on through the days after Pentecost, may we be filled with re-energized faith and trust in the Eternal One. God the Creator is with us today. The love of God is with us. The grace of our Savior is with us. The guiding presence of the Holy Spirit is with us. The strength of our constant companion is, with, is always with us. May God, the creator, redeemer, and comforter be among us as we worship. And if you'll remain standing, go ahead, J.D., you take it. Oh, sure. <laughs> and if you, if you please remain standing for the opening hymn at number 539, O Spirit of the Living God, sung by Miss Mary Wooden. <laughs> Once more and make it true. 
God's glory has come and will teach us to utter living words of truth which all may hear the language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear till every age and race and clime shall blend their creeds in one and earth shall form one family by whom thy will is done so shall we know the power of Christ who came this world to save so shall we rise with him to life which soars beyond the grave and earth shall win true holiness which makes thy children whole till perfected by thee we reach creation's glorious goal You may be seated. Okay. We've got a good amount of kids in the congregation today, and hopefully this summer we're going to be able to have you guys come and join me up near the front, okay? Because believe it or not, Rufus, you are going to go on a little bit of a vacation, aren't you? Yes, and he's happy about that. He needs to go home for just a little bit back to Brazil, but he probably won't be gone for the entire summer. So, so I'll let you know when he's going to be, be going. And Rufus, do you know that you're going to have some, some human friends up here next week? Who are they? Um, well, just to let you know, it's two of the confirmation kids. They're going to be helping with the children's message next week. Are they nice? Um, yes. Oh, they just said no. So, uh, I don't know, Rufus. We're going to have to see what happens next week, okay? Okay. So, let's see. What is this? Y you don't know. It's just, it looks like a floppy piece of plastic. Kids, what is, what is this? Do you know what this is? It's a balloon, isn't it? Yes, okay, it's a balloon. What happens to a balloon? Do you do anything to it, or is this, this is really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, there's another thing you can do. Olivia, what, what, do, what can you do to a balloon? You blow it up, yes, exactly. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna see. There's power in this balloon if you blow it up. Now. What, what's that? Oh, you heard from my brother and he said that I'm the one that's full of hot air, not the balloon? <laughs> Thanks, Rufus. Appreciate that a lot. But, yes, I may have some hot air in me, Rufus, but there is actually power and hot air in this balloon, and we'll see what happens when it goes in, okay? Just one sec. So, how is there power in this? This is what we usually see a balloon, right? You've, you've gotten some balloons before? Yep, okay. So here's what the power is. You ready? Well, that didn't quite go <laughs> the way I thought it was going to, but it got caught up in a plant. But what happened there, Rufus? Nothing? No, something happened. Kids, what, what did you see happen with the balloon? What happened to the balloon? Let's try it again, because <laughs> it was supposed to do something a little different. Well, that's good enough. Okay, you ready? Let's see what, what happens. Wow, what happened to the balloon? It flew, exactly, it flew away. So that was the power. That breath has the power to blow something really far away. Okay, so 
That is basically what happened in the story of Pentecost, kids and Rufus. The Holy Spirit of God came upon God's followers with the sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Do you think that you would have been a little scared if all of a sudden a giant wind started blowing through your house? Yeah, a little bit. I think it could have been very, very scary. But this was the coming of the Holy Spirit, and like that balloon blew off, the, the disciples, the apostles then, were blown out into the, not literally, but they, they were pushed out into the streets to be able to talk about God's great love through Jesus. That is pretty amazing. They did powerful things, more powerful than just blowing of a balloon across the floor, Rufus. Jesus' followers then made noise, speaking about God's deeds of power in a variety of languages that sounded strange, but they were more effective than a squealing balloon that goes off. So it was pretty amazing what God's spirit, God's breath could do, even way more than what my breath can do in talking or blowing up a balloon. Is that pretty cool? Yeah? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool to think about all those things that God's breath can do. So what God wants us to do is have us be filled with his Holy Spirit, which he will give us, and then we make some noise in this world for him. Do you think we can make some good noise in the world for him with our breath? Yeah, I think so too. And Rufus, I have to say a big thank you for, for dressing up a little bit. Not only do you have the, the red flowers, but he decided to wear a red cape for Pentecost today. So thank you, Rufus, and thank you to everybody who participated in the red, um, red theme for today. So kids, you are welcome to head to your Sunday school class at this time, and I will invite the Elm City Bells to come forward as they grace us with their last number for this, this um, season. We are so glad that they always give us such wonderful performances. Their last song for the season is Amazing Grace.
Beautiful job. Thank you so much, Karen, for leading and for all, for the sextet that was able to continue doing all of that music for all the pandemic. We appreciate your effort and your talent. So thank you for gracing us with your beautiful music for all of this year. And now there is only one scripture reading for today because it is a long one, the Pentecost story. So JD and I are going to be doing this, this scripture reading together. So if you are able, if you would please stand for our one scripture reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, pro prophesy and your young and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I've always been excited by countdowns. I'm a person who enjoys the anticipation of something as much as the end product. I love waiting for my favorite band's new album to come out because oftentimes when I actually get it, it's not nearly as good as I thought it would be. Anticipating a big game is usually more fun than what the actual match turns out to be after all the hype that's been built up in the media. Even vacations can be a letdown after all the planning and excitement that goes into preparing them. So whenever I see a countdown, like the one we just saw on the screen, I get a little twinge of excitement for what might happen. And just like what I've experienced in the past, I'm sure most of you are disappointed that it's just a sermon that's going to be following it. One of the things most associated with countdowns are, lo are rocket launches. Since we don't have NASA routinely setting off manned or unmanned ships into space anymore, our youngest generations don't have that thrill of watching many launches. I remember actually watching some in school when growing up, and there of course have been plenty of movies made about successful and heartbreaking launches, 
including the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986. I remember hearing about that one, sitting at a table in the high school lunchroom and feeling depressed for a few days afterwards. The countdown to launch can be thrilling, except when things go terribly wrong. That is what happened 25 years ago when a rocket carrying four spacecraft was launched into the great beyond. After only 37 seconds, the rocket started flying off course and everything disintegrated. Thankfully, there were no people on board this flight. Everything was being run remotely, but it still wasted a decade's worth of planning and oh, about $370 million worth of equipment. Since that accident, there have been many other flights of the Ariane 5 rockets with absolutely no difficulties. In essence, the problem on that very first launch was a bug in the computer software that ran the rocket. They got that figured out, and this type of rocket since has made 100 successful trips into space. But that first one, one of the most expensive computer glitches in all of history. Of course, not all rocket failures are tragedies. Whenever we learn that North Korea had a rocket flip and dive directly into the ocean, we're thankful, since they are going against what's been agreed upon in the United Nations protocol. It wasn't quite a rocket launch that we're celebrating today, but it was a launch of sorts for our Christian faith. The word Pentecost literally means 50 days, and it happens every year, 50 days after Easter, so it is seven Sundays following the resurrection. It is not that well known of a holy day, but for Christians, it was a vitally important occurrence. We wouldn't be sitting in these pews or watching the service on a screen if it wasn't for Pentecost. At the Ascension, which we celebrated last week, the disciples were told to head back to Jerusalem and await further instructions on what God wanted them to do after Jesus was taken back to heaven. And so they did. It sounds like they actually kind of hung out for about 10 days, wondering what would happen next. We can be glad that they actually listened to God this time, as he was waiting for the right time to have them start spreading the good news of Jesus throughout the known world. That time occurred when there were a lot of Jews in Jerusalem for the already established festival of Pentecost. It was a harvest festival, and it led many Jews to come to the temple to offer sacrifices. This meant that lots of people from other countries were there who didn't speak Aramean, which was the language the disciples probably knew. And we know that save for a couple of those disciples, they weren't educated. Some likely didn't know how to read or write Hebrew, the religious language, or Greek, the main spoken language of that time and place. So God chose an amazing opportunity to start his evangelism program. Wait until Jews from all over the known world were in one place and have Jesus' story be spoken in a multitude of languages. Ingenious, to say the least. Now, now, how this happened was unusual and probably a little frightening for those involved, not unlike the thrill of a rocket launch. The disciples were all gathered together awaiting instructions. Suddenly there flows through the room the sound of a mighty wind and tongues that look like fire start dancing above their heads. Later, they would understand that this was the action of the Holy Spirit, but at the time, they had to be terrified. Yet, as this strange phenomenon is happening, they're also compelled to run outside and start talking about what Jesus had accomplished. But the strangest part of all of this is that they are suddenly speaking comprehensively in foreign languages. It's like if J.D. all of a sudden had started the gospel lesson this morning in Italian, and a visitor from Rome woke up in her pew to the sounds of her mother tongue. Even if she understood English, she would be more attentive to the, that message because she wasn't expecting to hear it in her own native language. 
All the foreign Jewish visitors heard these disciples, possibly each speaking in a totally separate tongue, talking about the Messiah. Nowadays, we would think that everyone would have heard about Jesus 50 days after the resurrection. But remember, no internet, no TV, no radio, not even phones back then. These Jews coming in from faraway countries would have had no clue about Jesus or what he'd done. This was a completely new audience hearing what God had accomplished who could then take the news home and share it with their family, friends, synagogue. Thankfully, the church had a successful launch that day, spreading out from just the people who had been involved directly with Jesus to those who heard believed, and took action solely on faith. But not all beginnings are so successful. I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, failure to launch. Today, it's not usually used in space exploration terms, but in family situations. A failure to launch is when young adults decide they really don't want to leave the nest and be completely independent from their parents. According to a survey that was taken last fall, a record 52% of all Americans aged 18 to 29 are living with at least one of their parents. Over half of all 18 to 29 year olds are living with their parents. Now, of course, there are many aspects to this story. Some are in college and have their permanent residence at home while they live temporarily on campus. Some have been displaced temporarily because of the pandemic or had to move back in due to job loss. Others live together because it simply works financially and they share the home workload. Still others have had their aging parents move in with them for care purposes. So in many cases, these are not failed missions. The rockets have launched, but they might end up going further in the future. But we all know of cases where an unwillingness to become an adult, lack of financial understanding, poor work ethic, or other reasons have made for a not so ideal situation of parents living with children longer than expected. You may have even seen that movie, Failure to Launch, a few years back with Matthew McConaughey. It can seem like a good thing from the outside. Everybody in the family gets to live together for a good while longer but it can be very frustrating on the inside. While in some cases, this is what's best for the family, as in many other cultures, generations of the biological family living with each other is actually expected. In many cases, it's unwanted and means the child is not reaching their full potential. Thankfully, I've not had children, so I haven't had to worry about this. And my parents didn't have to worry about it either, I've always been independent and saved for college-age summers and the year between college and seminary. After age 18, I've lived on my own. And my brother, let's just say, stayed a bit longer. I won't get into any more details because mom is here today. Um, But he also soon was out in apartments managing his way in the world. So I am not exactly sure how you push children to find their wings when they prefer to stay at home. But I do know how to push the church if we end up having a failure to launch. But even if things do launch, it doesn't always mean that the mission is going to be completed. For one thing, we have to have enough fuel to do what we need. On finding that fuel, the church can be certain if we look in the right place. The only reason the apostles accomplished what they did was because they had the Holy Spirit. The 12 had everything they needed to be successful, and yes, they were back to 12 again, as Matthias had been chosen to replace Judas by now. But fuel was needed in the form of the Holy Spirit, and when God sent that upon them, they were unstoppable. Now, the Holy Spirit is active in this world at all times. It's spirit, not body, so it can go, be, and do whatever and wherever it wants. We may not understand this spirit any better today than they did back then, but so it is with God. Some of his ways are simply beyond our comprehension. 
but that doesn't mean we're not impacted by them. We can use that power to further God's work in the world. So we need to get our fuel, and the best places to do that are in worship, studying God's word, and spending time in Christian fellowship. How does getting the Holy Spirit help us to launch? By filling our spiritual fuel tanks. Throughout my career, I've heard so many people tell me that if they're a regular worship attendee and they have to miss a few Sundays, they actually feel spiritually run down like their spiritual supply is running on empty. By worshiping God and being in the presence of fellow Christians who support and care about you, you feel like you have the ability to fight temptation, depression, and ward off attacks from the evil one. May we pay attention to our spiritual fuel tanks and do what is needed to keep them filled. We can also do our best to make sure there are no bugs in the system. While we can't prevent certain things like hackers from the outside disrupting our process, we can make things work as smoothly as possible on the inside. That means we work together in the church and don't sabotage our ministries, despite having differences of opinions and ways of doing things. One of the things that I've always loved about the United Methodist Church is that we have people from all over the theological, political, cultural, and social spectrum working together to do what God wants us to do. And I'm always proudest of the church when we all come together for a big event and I witness so many people chipping in, whether it's time, energy, or money, enjoying each other's company and being amazed at the results. If throughout the entire church we spent less time focusing on what we differ on and more on how we are alike, I can only imagine how much more we'd get done. That doesn't mean we all have to be best buddies. It doesn't mean we have to think and act just like other people. But in order to make sure that we don't have bugs in our system, the system of the church, we do need to continue respecting others and seeing how God works in and through them in ways differently than he does in us. And with all those gifts and talents working harmoniously, the launch will be much more likely to achieve its goal. And lastly, we don't go into the great unknown alone. Although there are lots of movies that feature astronauts fearlessly tackling new planets and aliens all on their own, that really doesn't happen in real life. There is a coordinated effort with a multitude of people in space and on Earth whenever those rocket launches happen. And as Jesus' followers in the world today, we are still called to spread the good news of what Jesus did for us. Now that may be in voice, through the internet, in actions or music, but we are the apostles God has called now. In actuality, we are both disciples and apostles. Disciples are students of a particular teacher, in our case, Jesus. The word apostle means messenger, or one who is sent out with a message. We are both of those today. We learn from God in worship, from the Bible, from our interactions with other people. But we are also to take our learning and help others know the grace, love, and joy of the Lord. We can't do that if we confine our faith only to Sunday morning, if we don't share with others the difference Christ has made in our lives. Let the Spirit guide you in how you can be a Christian witness, but know that you aren't doing it alone. Your brothers and sisters in Christ are doing the same thing, and God is with you every step of the way. Putting your faith out there can be both exciting and scary. But when you know there are many others doing the same thing and the greatest power in the universe is helping you, you've got this. It was Pentecost Sunday. As the congregation filed into the church, the ushers handed each person a bright red carnation to symbolize the festive spirit of this day. The people listened attentively to the reading from the book of Acts, about how the disciples heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven and how the Holy Spirit had appeared like tongues of fire. 
Then came the fiery sermon. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, the preacher began. And a woman sitting in the front row shouted, like a powerful wind from heaven, and threw her red carnation toward the altar. A little disturbed, the preacher began again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The same woman's voice rang out, like tongues of fire, like tongues of fire. And she grabbed her neighbor's carnation and hurled it toward the altar. The preacher, a little annoyed by now, decided to try something. He looked straight at this woman and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, and it's urging us to give generously of our riches for his work. So toss whatever money you have with you and let God's Spirit take it wherever it goes. And the woman jumped up with as much fervor as before and said, Preacher, it's a miracle. You've done calm the wind and put out the fire. <laughs> Evidently, that was a great way to cancel the loss of someone's excitement. Hopefully, we don't do that much in our church, as we want people to remain excited by what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. And you can never, ever put out the fire of what God wants to be accomplished. There might be a failure to launch for a while, but if we keep listening to the Lord, a way will be made. Church, it's time to go into the world and accomplish what God wants. So everyone, let's launch. Amen. And now it is a joy to have Beth joining us, and she will play and sing for us the song, Start a Fire. I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Lord, restore the joy I had I have one that bring me back In this dark Perfect. 
Pentecost song. We will lift up our joys and concerns for this day, and there are plenty of them to lift up. We, I was able to see Agnes Dunn this week. I know some others did as well. She is continuing to, to rehab at Heartland in Henry, and we are very grateful that she is doing so well. Crystal Lily's brother is in the nursing home, and we continue to lift him up as he continues to have major difficulties. We lift up everyone dealing with COVID, of course. We get to see Charlotte Turnier this afternoon, um, so continued prayers for her as she transitions into her new home at Aperion, and she would continue to appreciate cards. She is now in room 40A there at Aperion. We continue to lift up Bonnie Schneider, um, Jen Schneider's mother-in-law, who has cancer for the third time. We um, lift up the family of Donna Pace. She was in hospice care and she did pass away on Friday. So we, we lift up Donna's family. Steve Manzanares has hip surgery scheduled for Tuesday, May 25th. So we pray for Steve as he has, his, has this hip surgery. Pat Etheridge is with us today, which is wonderful. She had successful eye surgery this week, but we continue to, to pray for her in her recovery. Eleanor Nelson is thankful that she's adjusting well to her near, new hearing aids. We're grateful that Jay Schneider is back in town and we continue to lift up him in his recovery. Mary Wooden let me know that, um, was it yesterday? Yesterday, Amber Biddix and um, her fiance Jeremy had a baby that was just named this morning, Adeline Lucille. Adeline Lucille, nine pounds, half ounce, 19 and a half inches long. So the Woodens are grandparents, again. She is a healthy baby girl, and she arrived on the day that Mary's mom passed away a year ago and has her mother's name as her middle name. So congratulations to, to Amber, Jeremy, and the whole family. We lift up um, Cassie Younts, who has breast cancer. We lift up Dave Yepsen on the passing of his wife, Lori. Josh Bush's friend, Yanni, um, who had COVID, unfortunately passed away this week from COVID and the complications of a bacterial lung infection. So we lift up her family. Josh's friend, Josh, in Bloomington, also was in a motorcycle accident and he is currently in the hospital. So we lift up that Josh. And we also want to lift up my neighbors, um, Steve and Shelley Manier. Um, their son passed away in an auto accident yesterday, and this makes the second um, son that they've lost in three years. So um, we, we lift up the Manier family as they go through this tragedy, as well as the others that, other families that lost a loved one in that accident. So those are the ones that I received. Again, thank you to everyone who, who wore red today. Thank you for those who, who are celebrating the, me being old now. And um, we appreciate all of the ones who do that as well as we celebrate your birthday if you're having it at this time of year as well. Let us bow our heads then for the pastoral prayer. Then we'll say our Lord's Prayer together. Holy God, the promise of Pentecost is the po promise of power the power to be peacemakers in a world torn by violence, the power to be forgiven our own guilt and to forgive the guilt of others, the power to be courageous in the face of danger, the power to offer hope and joy in the midst of pain and suffering. Encourage us, we pray, to testify to your presence in the world, to exemplify your love for all humanity, and to open our hearts to being radically changed by your spirit. And Lord, awaken us to the wind and the tongues of fire that wait to fill us with new life and amazing hope. May we feel the flames of your love resting on us, empowering us to love and serve in Christ's name. As we feel that presence in our lives, we ask that you be with all who are hurting this day, in body, mind, or spirit. Help people to find the relief and the help they need, and allow us to be a part of the solution and continue sending blessings upon us so that they can be passed on to others while putting a smile on our faces. Here are the words we've lifted up today, as well as those that are on our hearts, as we pray in the confidence of Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as always, we say thank you to all of those who have supported us in so many different ways. We especially lift up the, the, those who are giving financially to the church to be able to starting this Sunday, have the air conditioning on, and um, all the other things that simply take money in this world. So thank you for, for giving so generously from your hearts for the good of God in our community and in the world. You are always invited to, if you're in the sanctuary, to put your money in the plates that are at the exits of the sanctuary, to mail it in, to put, give through PayPal, or to put it in the white locked box outside of the church. And now, if you'll please bow your heads with me for our offering prayer, and then we'll have our doxology. Gracious God, Jesus promised his disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit, a gift that remains as powerful and transformative today as it was on that first Pentecost. With generous and thankful hearts, we offer our gifts to you, our time, treasure, and talent. But most of all, we offer you our hearts. Use us and these offerings for your purposes and glory. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. And if you'll please remain standing as we have Mary and Charlie close us with my favorite Pentecost song, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit. It's number 334, and she will sing it twice. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. with your love. 
And I did forget one joy. It was the Princeton High School graduation yesterday, and we had at least three, if not more, of our young youngsters um, graduate and start a new part of life yesterday. So congratulations to, to Emma and to Alex and Colin and, and Trent and all the others who, who graduated, and we pray for all the graduates throughout um, this, this country that they'll be able to accomplish what God wants them to, and we'll celebrate that a little bit more next month too. And thank you to all, everyone who helped out today. We've got Maggie and Josh and Bruce in the back. We had um, Julie and, and Bill and Marg and Marsha greeting people, Charlie, Mary, Beth, um, joining with the, the sung word and the spoken word with JD and myself. So thank you to everyone who helped out as well as the Bells, and we thank all of them for, for being so, so dedicated during this last, these last um, nine to 12 months. It was definitely appreciated. And because it is my birthday weekend, we are going to do the benediction I want to do. So there, it is the Irish blessing. So if you will please um, join with me in this part of my heritage, if you will. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow softly at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Church, we are ready to go into the world to share Jesus' love with everyone. Let's launch and let's have a good mission. Go in the peace, love, and joy of our Lord. Amen.